and so, I was born. The first people I remember seeing were the old man, the old lady, and their daughter, Heather. After they'd said hello, the old man powered me down so he could install some software. I could tell they were nice people. The old man didn't give me a silly voice or stupid personality. And the old lady didn't dress me like a clown. Although for some reason, Heather really didn't like me. Once I'd had time to get used to walking, the old man asked me to dash from one end of the room to the other. Next, the old man spent a couple of hours building some wooden platforms, he said he wanted me to jump up them, but I must admit, I was scared. It wasn't until I saw Heather and her mother happily climbing up them, that I decided it might be okay. The old man then rearranged the platforms. He told me to try to reach the other end of the room without touching the floor. Heather said, the floor's made of lava. But when I smiled at her, she just frowned and looked away. The old lady arranged some pillows and blankets. She said it was in case I fell, but I think she just wanted it to look more like lava. When I reached the other side, the old man just smiled and said, that'll do, for now. days after those first lessons, the family had a big meal, and I was introduced to everyone else. The professor was the old man's brother. He was very quiet, and always seemed to just, kind of stare at me. He had lived with the old man for five years. The house was so huge they barely saw each other. He preferred instead to stay in his room, leaving everything up to his butler, Mr. Deck as he insisted everyone call him, although the professor always called him Anton. For a while, he called me the yellow bastard. But the old man made him stop, as he thought it sounded racist. Mr. Silton was the old man's driver. Before he worked here he'd gotten in with some bad people and was the driver in the post office robbery, although it all went wrong for some reason. Mr. Silton showed me a video of this band. I'm sure some people must like it, but I just found it terrifying. Then there was Alice. She was the cook. She was a nice old lady. When she was younger she had been a TV chef. Then, years later she had a small part in Coronation Street. Mr. Silton said, before she worked for the old man, Alice was quite a hoarder. She kept old newspapers and bicycles. And something about a pool, in a shoebox. The next morning, the old man gathered everyone together, to show them what I was capable of. What else does he do? asked Mr. Silton. The old man smiled. He can help around the house. Could he help me with my newspaper collecting? asked Alice. I'm not sure that's a good idea, said the old lady, but he can do all sorts of jobs. Yeah, said Mr. Silton, shove a stick up his ass and he can do Dick's job. Now now, said the old man, we have company, pointing to some important looking people. Two large men, 
both called Gary, set up what the old man referred to as lasers. He said again, I should try to get from one end of the room to the other, but I shouldn't be worried, as I had a special chip which meant no matter how damaged I was, I couldn't die. He said it was like infinite lies in a video game. But when he realized I didn't understand, he said he would explain another time. Everybody clapped, except the important looking men. Not exactly a cold calculated killer, is it? said the man in black. The man in grey laughed. What kind of artificial intelligence was that? he asked. Move right, unless there's something in the way. Okay okay, said the old man. He turned to me and whispered, they're going to make it quite a bit tougher. But I'm sure you'll be fine. The Garys then rearranged the room one last time, the old man smiled. Now now, there's no need to look so glum, he said. I'm still happy with everything you've done today. So this time, I was determined to do him proud. The old man's friends actually seemed quite happy when I made it through. We might have a winner after all, said the man in black. It's no kill by 3000, but you can almost see the fire in its eyes. A couple of days later, the old lady said she had a surprise for me, my own room. She also wanted to play me some music. I wasn't sure after what Mr. Silton had shown me. As if music wasn't amazing enough, the old lady then bought me a television set. I couldn't believe what I saw, I watched everything I could. Comedy, drama, horror, sci-fi. Anything anyone wanted to watch I would happily watch with them. Then one day, the old man set up a small box, he plugged some cables into the television, and said, this is what I meant, when I said video games. I played games at every chance I could. I took on everyone. I was unstoppable. I had enjoyed music, film, and television. But to me, video games really were the highest art form.
Heather's birthday was a couple of months later. Her mum and dad had bought her a camera and arranged a day up by the sea so that Heather could take some photos, although I really don't think she wanted any pictures of me. When the old man asked the professor if he wanted to go, he frowned and said, I can't believe you want to spend time with that thing, it could destroy the world. I wasn't sure what he meant, but the old man just smiled and said, that's what you said about the Game Boy. And on, how about you? I don't think so, said Mr. Deck. The last time I got in that car, Barry crashed us into a branch at Woolworths. I never would have gone into Woolworths of my own accord. The old man explained that the car was old and the brakes had failed, but Mr. Deck was having none of it. So Mr. Silton drove, and Alice came along for the fresh air. I enjoyed being outside. Although, the old lady kept telling me to be careful of the rickety old walkways. It felt like she was telling me off, but I think she was just concerned. As the old man and I stood on the cliff tops, I could see something in the distance. I wasn't sure what it was, so I asked the old man. He said it was a battleship that had sunk in the 1940s. But he looked so sad when he spoke about war. I didn't see what happened, but the metal platform Heather was climbing on had collapsed. She was safe. Even if the rocks she was on looked very dangerous. The tide was rising, and we didn't know how long the Coast Guard was going to be. So I offered to climb down and get her. The old man agreed, but said I should be careful, as Heather doesn't have infinite lives, like I do. Heather was unconscious, and her leg was broken, so I picked her up as gently as I could. I decided it would be best if I didn't run the rest of the way. ambulance had arrived by the time I had made it back to the cliff top. The medics made sure Heather was okay, and then took her off to hospital. A few days later, we all went to see how she was doing. She was fine, but would have to wear the cast for a couple of months. Once Heather got to know me, we became good friends. We enjoyed the same films and TV. She was also annoyingly good at some of my favorite games. After a while, she became very interested in how I worked. Soon she knew as much about me as the old man did, if not more. We spent the next couple of months visiting other countries, as when it came to teaching me things, 
The old man always liked to pick interesting locations. He had explained the basics of mathematics to me at the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Taught me history in the dead of night, surrounded by mysterious giant stones. And even showed me science in action high up in a hot air balloon. This is why I was surprised when the old man took me to a restaurant. It was nice, but it seemed very somber compared to the previous grand locations. He said he just wanted to chat, and this was nice and quiet. Plus it was his favorite place to eat. We talked about life, the universe, Douglas Adams, everything really. When I asked him why were we here, why did we exist, he just smiled and said, life is like a game, just don't expect to be finished anytime soon. When I looked puzzled, he said, well, everyone should have a purpose. So I asked him, what's my purpose? He thought for a bit, then said, so you want to be a real boy? Which just confused me even more. Eventually the old man said, for now, I want you to help clean things around the house. I must have looked unimpressed. As he then said, okay, I want you to clean one million things. It didn't sound like the meaning of life. But I suppose you've got to start somewhere.